Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm just back from the Prince of the City event in Bathgate. So this is for Vampire Rivals card game from Renegade Games. And it was a pretty cool venue. And as you know, I've been doing a bit of Rivals content on the channel. So just thought I'd do a wee wrap up of the event, talk about my experiences, but also reveal what's on this paper which is some facts and figures about the event, the agendas and, and um, who scored what and who did what, who took what. Really interesting facts and figures. So let's start talking about the event itself. So run by Knightley Gaiman and Bathgate. So in case you don't know, Bathgate is a town, a wee town between Glasgow and Edinburgh. It's closer to Edinburgh, to be honest. Uh, this is a wee town. It's, it's on the main train line, so you can get there quite easily by train. But what's really cool about Bathgate is all the town centre parking is free. And there seems to be loads of it. So on a, on a wee side, it is a wee town, so don't expect too much from Bathgate. But certainly the L parts of the town centre I saw didn't seem to be that much stuff closed. Of course, if you are a, a local from Bathgate, you'll tell ah, the town's in terminal decline like the rest of the high street. But actually, from what I saw, it seemed to be a town centre surviving. And I think a bit of that would be free parking. But anyway... You don't want to hear about my geography levels and talking about towns and retail and stuff. Anyway, so Nightly Games. So it's a multi-level venue. At the moment, there's two levels open to the public. So downstairs is a shop and a cafe section. Upstairs is all the gaming tables. It's quite a lot of space. Quite a lot of gaming tables can be put up there. And it seems to be well ventilated as well. It's chatting to Brett, the owner, and he's got a really impressive ventilation system. But also, he's telling us about the floor above that. So that'd be the second floor up. Where he's got plans to make like uh, places you can go and role play or do run podcasts and stuff from. It's a really interesting venue, really interesting plans for it. I think before Five Storm Games opened, it was going to be the largest game and space venue in the UK. Um, so uh, I think Five Storm Games like, announced it was opening a week after they did. But, uh, so they were there for a bit, they were there for a bit. Uh, uh, so yeah, so lots of space in the venue. You can do a lot of stuff, which are quite like light and airy. They've got some like big windows at the front, so lots of light coming in. So yeah, really impressive. Um, toilets had uh, extra tins of deodorant and stuff if you needed it. So yeah, boom. Uh, spot on for the venue, quite a nice lunch as well, um, BLT. So, talk about my experiences at the event, and then I'll show off the swag, and so you're not looking at my ugly face all for the rest of the video, and then I'll reveal other stats. So I took a Malkavian conspiracy deck. Not because I thought I would do particularly well with it, I keep up with the meta. I'm at, but to be honest, I've not played that much Rivals. I don't play online. I like my games to be in person. And I've got a load of other games going on in my life. So I probably haven't devoted as, as much time to be as cutting edge. So Malkavians, as you know, is a clan close to my heart. So Malkavians it was. So it's pretty much a Malkavian conspiracy deck. Based on the end is nigh. Agenda. But also... Actually, it's wing con is basically um, prestige trim. And I'd thrown some Nosferatu in so I could use the card which I could steal somebody else's rival token, which meant that if anybody's looking particularly weak on the board, I'd be able to do the Markavian thing and say, well, I'm not actually attacking you. I'm going to attack you, knock you up. So, first game. So, first game was um, Darren, who had the uh, governor. I had the governor, he had the Ender's Night, I had the Ender's Night, and he had the Madhouse. I had the Madhouse. So we had to bid off against the governor, I won, two prestige. There was also Guy who was playing Bella, Strength and Numbers, or oh, I want to say Library. In fact, if you give me two ticks, I will check my notebook for the day. Uh, yeah, University Library and Brett, who was running University Library, Ale 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 Alejandro, and Knowledge is Power. Really interesting, lots of stuff happening. Quite political, quite a bit of table talk, really fun for my first game. And Brett, Knowledge is Power, 
you know that engine started kicking in so we kind of focused a lot of effort on him guy crept up the table took prince of the city and was about to win the game when he overextended himself played an extra vampire and uh, darren to his credit who's only been playing a week uh, they've got quite a few reps in the hotel there's this week uh, darren and his pal russell cook from the northeast so actually accents like mine sound like me um and uh yeah darren managed to slip in with like i say it's a, virtually a mirror image of my deck and uh prestige drained out guy victory to uh victory to the governor um just not my governor uh game two game two was really interesting so there was two hard the herd uh, agendas on the table uh both start off with clandestine one replaced it with doc i've got doc and clandestine in my deck so i was like oh um but actually the person attacking me anna was using i want to say it was strength in numbers it's the only agenda i didn't write down it was beretta it was lots of attacks dragons roost so my deck struggled to get set up and i was basically pitching cards to to defend against that including dumpster diving and, and pulling stuff back out and yeah i really didn't get started it ended up third on that table uh, the first table ended up second and actually i think there's a, a chance if if it had gone on a turn i was in a position where i could have um bled out my rival who was Brett, so I was one turn behind the behind the thing. So game three, that was my only three play game of the tournament, and it was Gordon using a titles power base deck, Victor Temple Royal Retreat, and Alexander Clandestine Sewers Invisible Army. As it turned out, we all thought it might be in Hold the Hood, and uh, that game again, quite a nice tight game. At one point, I thought I had bled out Gordon, who was my prey, and Jesus, Jesus um, ran in and stopped us. <sighs> no, and but I was in a position to take Gordon out next turn. Still had demand obediences in my hand, and he was he was only on like two prestige. Um, Alexander was on eight or nine agenda and he just managed to close out that that game and it's oh, so close so yeah my deck worked all right um what would you say about you you might have seen the Malkavian player boot deck I think conspiracies at the moment are a bit slow I look at say the gangrel and animals and, and what you can do with those uh, with actions and stuff bouncing around and stuff and, and then I look at the similar sort of things we can achieve with conspiracies and it's that setting up of your deck which is really difficult at the start you just don't have the actions so that is a one of the key things with the deck at the moment and actually some of the games were over like that i was worried about the hour 75 minutes the hour and 15 being too short for a four player multiplayer games Previously to this, my experience with multiplayer games was Game of Thrones multiplayer, which did tend to uh, run on a bit. Or one-on-one -on -one Game of Thrones, I think it was 45 minutes for a game round, and that would often go at a time. Whereas these games seem to wrap up. I only saw one which ran over time. So that was it. I didn't make the cut. Uh, finished, yeah, second on one table, third on another, and not a lot of agenda points. So it was 11 out of 14 to finish. But, hey-ho, not the end of the world because I've got the top 16 prizes. So let me set up the camera and we'll talk about and show off the top 16 prizes because these are lovely. Okay, so participation prizes. I think I've got all these muddled up, but a couple of packs of Prince of the City card sleeves. So who doesn't like card sleeves? So that's pretty cool. We have some alt art cards as well. So a certain authority. Backhanded compliment. 
sucker punch and all tied up really nice full bleed all that cards who doesn't like all that cards uh, we also got the victor temple promo so i am wanting to do something with schemes next i probably wouldn't take schemes for tournament but uh, victor temple certainly is going to be part of that deck now next up we have the agenda cards now these are nice thick card the kind of like embossed shiny and there's piles of these so based on your on your ranking you could pick them up so i thought i would pick up the hunters and we came across quite a bit manipulate the masses again that might be the scheme deck but actually i really like the artwork on that as well invisible army again if Kind of uh, the agendas that beat me up today, so the ones I picked as a, a bit of a memory. And how could I not take the Ender's Knife? The other thing we got were these leader tokens, acrylic. So we ten ten of these for pretty much all the clans that are released so far. So listen to that. That's a lovely sound of that. So. Lovely leader tokens. Markavian one's currently in my Markavian deck box. But yeah, really nice. Really glad I went. And the top four was play mats. And obviously the, the overall winner got the card. Got a card based on them. So let's have a look at some stats. So out of all the agendas there, uh, the end is nigh. There was two. Strength of numbers was two. The most common agenda was Horde. And the rest of the agendas I'm going to mention, there was only one of each. So there's quite a nice spread of agendas. So Knowledge is Power, a Base of Power, Invisible Army, Animal Kingdom, Hunt the Hunters, Wake the Dead, and Prize Fighter. Uh, top four agendas that got through to the top final was Wake the Dead, The End is Nigh, Prize Fighter, and Strength in Numbers. So the King of Swiss was Chris and he was running a Thin Blood deck with the Pit and Prize Fighter with Jacob Frost as his go-to leader. And I do have some stats there. Second in Swiss was Guy Wilson with his kind of Toreador uh, strength in numbers, Bella University Haven. Third was Darren with his End is Nigh, Malkavian deck. Fourth was Murray, and Murray was running a Hikata, uh, Enzo with the Dead Mission Cemetery. Uh, Fifth was Anna that was running the kind of Bruja Beretta ranged attack deck. And I think the agenda was strength at numbers. I, I think it's the only one I didn't write down. I do apologize. So um and then Alexander Watson, who was running the guys played in the third game, which is clandestine and the sewers and invisible army. So the top table then was Geo Frost, the Pit Prize Fighter. Next was Enzo Wake the Dead Mission Cemetery, the Governor Madhouse and Inmate, and Bella University and Strength and Numbers. So quite a mixed bag there for the top table. And the top table was taken by Murray with Enzo Wake the Dead and Mission Cemetery. So Hakata took the event. And I think Hakata took a lot of people by surprise. Certainly at the start of the day, a lot of people were talking about La Sombra from the Shadows and Shrouds. And uh, we didn't see any La Sombra on the field, actually. And uh, very little Hakata taken the event. So, yeah, pretty cool event. I'm still puzzled a bit by... And a few of us were talking about... We understand the score points, 
So uh, three if you win, one if you survive, none if you get knocked out. We understand that part of things, but it was the way strength schedule and agendas used. So, for example, Steve Overton uh, came joint, um, came eighth and was eighth in the rankings, but he was score of five with five other people. His strength schedule put him down to eighth. But he was a person that managed to amass the most agenda points. So imagine this, over three games you've amassed 37 agenda points. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I amassed 17 agenda points and, and just got three three points. So yeah, so, so looking at that and how tournaments were organised and, and how people went for it. I was impressed with Vassil's... Um, Hod the Hunters deck, uh, not Hod the Hunters, Hod the Herd, that came out of nowhere and kind of ramped up. And actually, most of the games, he only had a couple of vampires out as well. We played a friendly afterwards, and he, I saw um, a time when both his vampires got feared, so that wasn't great for him. But hey, ho, he, he really good player. It's really good seeing a lot of different players, a lot of different play styles. We haven't had a massive group in Glasgow. And so far, up until the event, I'd only played games versus uh, three, four, four different people. So seeing stuff, seeing how it works, seeing how a lot of different things work, certainly a big learning point for me. Like I say, I've had my fun with the Malkavians. I've been to my big event with Malkavians. Who knows what I'll use next time. But certainly the I've been left hungry for deck building, learning more, playing more and engaging more. We're looking at doing a sort of a demo day in Glasgow for, for new people. And then maybe it's a month or two later doing some sort of uh, more formal event for for those people that, that want to get into it in Glasgow as well. So that would be fun to do. So there we go. So big shout out to Nightly Games for running it. Uh, and Brett for organising it. And Alexander Watson who... Uh, was involved in organising it and, and judging it as well. And yeah, I do have a few more st stats hanging around. So if, if you want to ask me any questions, I can hunt it down and look at it for you. Just shout out in the comment sections. But it's been a great day. I really enjoyed it. Really hungry for more rivals. And you know what? You have a great time. And I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.